Now, for this particular use case, we are going to cover uh, IP overlapping CIDR. That is a very important use case from the aviatrix perspective or also from the customer perspective that how you're going to solve this kind of problem where you see that we have a VPC in cloud, which has a subnet 10.2.1.0 slash 24 and on-prem location also have a CIDR that is 10.2.1.0. It may happen due to acquisitions, mergers and all that stuff, right? But in real world, how you're going to solve this problem? Because this is not possible without using any kind of solution because uh, two locations having same subnet, they cannot communicate, right? Uh, like if they're having the same CIDR values, right? It will be overlapping. So how to solve that problem? So Aviatrix has a very unique solution for it that is uh, known as MapNet. So if you go to uh, uh, Aviatrix dashboard, you go to settings, uh, sorry, the site to cloud. And what you have to do, you have to click add new. Here, we, what we will be doing, we will be creating a site to cloud tunnel from our on-prem to our uh, uh, cloud location and we will doing a map net. Map net basically means that on both sides we will be using a virtual CIDR. There will be a different CIDR for both of the locations. So in that way we will be hiding the actual IPs behind these virtual CIDRs. So how we are going to do that? Let's see. Let's go to AVX prod VPC. We do a map net. Connection lab, let's take overlap uh, CIDR remote gateway generic and then from here from where you are actually doing on cloud side it is on spoke one right this particular uh, gateway is spoke one right so we have taken the primary cloud gateway spoke one remote gateway ip address is the ip address of uh, that particular csr the public ip address of that uh, csr right so let's take uh, instance and then the csr public ip let's take if it is this one, go here, paste that particular IP. Now, pre-shared key, you can take any any particular key, right? So let's take, let's take it as via burning. Let's take it as simple as that. Then remote si subnet real. What is the remote subnet real? We, I am doing the configuration on the spoke side. So CSR side, what is the real subnet ID? So basically it is 10.2.1.0 slash 24. Virtual subnet that we are going to use is 172.2.1.0 slash 24 on that side. Local subnet is, real subnet is 10.2.1.0 slash 24. That is the same subnet as remote. And look, and the local virtual subnet that we are going to use would be 192.2.1.0. Click OK. So that creates a tunnel, but it is down. So what we have to change is click on add it go downwards and you have to change this remote identifier ip the ip that you have to use is the private ip of that particular instance so if i go to network interfaces and i go to the primary interface and it is uh, 10.2.1.61 the primary uh, ip the uh, private ip 10.2.1.61 okay 10.2.1.61 or what you can do just go here and we can do a paste as well so that it becomes easy that we are not doing any changes said just give me a second go to instance copy this in copy this uh ip it change the configuration right now you have changed the configuration now what you have to do is next step is click on edit now you have to download the configuration for that particular isr device right this particular config, you don't have to do uh, create a configuration manually for the IPsec connection and everything. From Aviatrix portal itself, you can download the configuration. It does the uh, does it for you. Just download the configuration. This is the configuration that has been created. Now, what we are going to do side by side, we will open our tab of this router. Okay, and this is our private and public instance. So let's start uh, pasting the configuration in our uh, ISR router, go to conf t, click enter. Nothing you have to do, you to just have to judge, use the values that have been, uh, the configuration that has been created for uh, by the Aviatrix dashboard itself for the IP second activity and all, right? So just go there. We have changed the values parameters already that, click edit and now, 
use this one here Let's go here and do the paste so we are just pasting the configuration some values you have to change like the tunnel number and all so we will do that side by side just do it and then tunnel source gigabit ethernet one and from here you have to change this one you have to paste this configuration now you go to the static configuration you do tunnel just click this and paste it here as well this has been done do write mem also uh, for uh, like uh, for uh, virtualization what we will do is that we will uh, enable the interface gigabit ethernet as well so interface gigabit ethernet 2 no shutdown and just uh, like i we will take the address from dhcp exit exit to ip in brief let's check whether we got the configuration or, or whether the ips that we are getting are not uh, getting or not just wait for that yeah so now we have received an ip from uh, uh, dhcp for gigabit ethernet 2 right so now the most important thing that we need to check is how you can like make sure that you are able to get through the connectivity part so if you check from here the ip of the private instance that is running in um, uh, on the avatrix prod vpc side this is a private instance we have two instances private instance and this is a jump host basically the public instance so right now this uh, if i show you if you go to ohio i just want to show you that what is the ip we are using so this is the private vm this is a public test vm this is a uh, uh, jump host and this is the private vm so the ip that we are using on this private vm is 10.2.1.8 right so how you verify whether the connectivity from the csr side is fine or not right so just do a ping but now you will not do a ping for 10.2.1.8 what we have done is that if you have seen that on aviatrix controller side if you go to the tunnel first verify whether the tunnel status is up or not it is up right now if you verify one thing that remote subnets and the local subnets local subnet is 192.2.1.0 on uh, vpc side right so i am just checking from my isr router so what i have to do 192.2.1.8 why dot 1.8 because on my private subnet side on uh, prod vpc the ip is 10.2.1.8 so only i have replaced the starting two uh, values other two values remain same so if i take the source as gigabit ethernet 2 and do a ping it is working fine right so if you want to repeat it for anything like 100 so ping is working absolutely fine same thing you can verify from uh, uh the vpc side as well so if so if you want go here and uh, check it for that particular csr let's try to see if it, if it can be stopped the same thing you can actually check from the private instance as well if you want to do the ping for this particular ip so let's check the ip on this side if i do a brief and let's check it for 10.2.1.13 so let's try to do for ping.172 because 172 is on that side right and what 172 172.2. right so let's go 172.2. and which is the ip on this side 1.13 right 1.13 so ping is coming right so this is how you can actually solve the problem this particular problem that you are able to see on both of the side of overlapping cider right only thing that you have to use or configure is the map net or the virtual cider that we basically use so thank you for this particular use case